Housing Options Part 1, an Elder Care Seminar, DARTS Workplace Elder Care Seminars. All right, I'll move forward. So a couple of, of handouts that we have for you today. This is the handout that you will hopefully follow for the presentation. And then for those of you here in the Twin Cities, there is a senior housing guide, and I'm going to use this as a reference point as well. I brought lots of extra copies, and there is a website. If you just Google Twin Cities Senior Housing Guide, you can find this online. For those of you who may be in greater Minnesota, I recommend that you find your local area agency on aging, and they can help you find housing options in your area throughout the state. All right, so we'll use this as kind of a background, but we're actually going to be using this as our discussion today. We're going to take a look at a couple of different areas. What are your housing options? So we'll cover staying in your home. How many of you are caring for an older adult who says, I want to stay in my home? All right. Uh, surprisingly, a few years ago, that would have been every hand in the room, and it was not. Oops. Then we'll look at independent senior housing, so no services, just what are the options for they need to move out of their home, what kind of housing options are there, and then housing with services. I apologize in advance, there is a lot of information for us to get through today. This one and the first one we did on legal and financial issues are probably the most um, intense in terms of content, but I'm hoping that between the handout and the senior housing guide, you'll have enough information to work through this once we've done kind of the overview of the information. All right. So oftentimes at DARTS, we hear caregivers and we hear older adults saying, what are the options? I'm afraid I'm not going to find what meets my needs. What if I make a move now and it doesn't work for me in the long run and I have to move again? I'm tired. I want a home. I don't want to keep moving. How do I make the best choice in the long term? And then, is there an alternative to a nursing home? When I was a young child, my mom and dad knew that there were two options once they lost their independence. It was either the nursing home or the poor farm. That generation gave us an amazing gift by creating this market that we now know has independent senior housing and assisted living for seniors and memory care for seniors and nursing homes that are more than just a place to house people until they die. But older adults often only remember that childhood fear of someday I might grow up and have to go to the poor farm or to the nursing home and I'll be left with nothing and my family will be left with nothing. So hopefully we'll give you some good information today and some good strategies for how you can begin to broaden the perspective of your loved one to consider other possibilities, all right? So the first thing is, as we've been talking throughout my presentations, is that this is about finding what's best for your loved one. So if you will now go to your housing decisions sheet and see where it said, where's that little worksheet that says what are the seniors needs? They're getting frail, they're getting forgetful, um, they need help bathing, they need help keeping the house clean. What are their needs? And then please, on the other side, what are their strengths? They love to read books, they love to crochet, playing cards is their life. What are their strengths? Very sociable, very faith-driven. What are their needs and what are their strengths? And I'm going to give you a few minutes to take a look at that and think about your senior, your loved one, in those terms. All right, so with those needs and their strengths in mind, Keep those in the back of your mind as we go through the options that are available. The first one is staying at their, in their own home. If you're concerned that it's no longer safe for them to be staying in their own home, but they're saying, I want to stay in my home, then let's take a look at, is there a way we can make that happen? 
Are there ways that we can remove throw rugs so that we reduce the, ha the tripping hazard? Are there ways we can take out thresholds if there's a drop down in, into the family room? Is there a way we can remove that threshold again to, to remove the tripping hazard? Is there a way we can make it easier for them to have what they want and stay in their home? So this is the, the options we're going to look at. We're going to look at home modification, accessory housing, bringing in professional services, and then what is a reverse mortgage and how does that play into the possibilities of doing any of these things. So home modifications are simple or maybe complex changes that can be made to the home to meet your loved one's needs. So if your loved one is no longer able to safely get in and out of a bathtub, then maybe it's time we look at a bathroom remodel. On the other hand, if your loved one is frail and is having trouble with knobs and, and maybe has arthritis, then maybe changing all of the, hand, the door handles and the faucet handles from the knobs to the lever will make it that much easier for them to have the access they need in their home. Lighted switch plates are an easy way to make it easier for older adults to get up in the middle of the night and make their way to the bathroom. A lighted switch plate just becomes a night light, but helps them find their way. Again, simple home modifications. There are simple things and there are complex things that we can do to make it possible for older adults to stay in their home. As you look now at your list of needs, does anyone have a need for their senior that they want to just mention and we can see if we can find a way to adapt their home to make it possible? Yes? We don't have an adequate first floor bedroom. Oh, so how do you find a first floor bedroom that will work for your loved one? Couple of options. The first one is remodeling the first level of the house. The second one is installing a chairlift because I assume that on the second floor or in the lower level there is an adequate bedroom. So perhaps one of those chairlifts and they have come a long way from what they were um, 20 years ago. These chairlifts are now sleek, um, they're reliable, they can carry people with great weight assuming they are capable of sitting upright. If, if this is a person who needs to be in a hospital bed all the time, then that would not be a good option. But they have, you know, they have, they're sleek looking and they have seat belts on them so that they can safely ride up a flight of stairs. So perhaps that would be an option. Do you have any ballpark My guess is that they, the ones I saw, and that was a few years ago, were about $2,000 really not that bad and now the seat folds up so that they don't they don't block anyone else from having access to that stairway all right any other concerns any other physical barriers in a home one of them is the laundry is no longer on the same level and I'm concerned about mom and dad walking up and down the stairs the first option is to put that bright strip on each stair to make the stair easier for them to see. The next option is to bring in a homemaker and have someone come in once a week or twice a week and just do the laundry and while they're there they can run the vacuum and, and, and do, perform other services. And then the third is again in the home modification um, to do with that major home remodel um, to bring in to bring the laundry up into the, into the first floor. Mind you, as older adults get older, their needs for laundry are less, so they can probably use a stackable washer and dryer, which would take up less room, perhaps be in, a, a, convert a linen closet to a laundry area. So we're not talking about taking out rooms here. There are ways to make these, these things doable. All right, others, other barriers anybody wants to bring up? So what is accessory housing or echo housing? Has anyone ever heard of this idea? It's just another very cool way, and I bet you you would all think of this on your own. You just wouldn't know that it's called this. What if there's a granddaughter or a grandniece or grandnephew who could 
can't afford their first apartment because times are tough and jobs don't pay that much and apartments are expensive, and they could move in with grandma and grandpa, create their own living space in the basement, so put, put a bathroom in the lower level or a second level, um, a kitchen if they don't want to share the kitchen, and then be there to provide services, be there to help with the homemaking, to help with the laundry, to help with the meal preparation in exchange for rent. Or another option is to move parents in with their, their, their adult children. It's called accessory housing or echo housing when it becomes almost a separate living quarters. You're going to need to check with your local city ordinances. Generally, there is an ordinance that says there needs to be a common entrance so that it, it doesn't become a duplex because we all know cities have ordinances about how many duplexes there can be and you don't want to create a duplex you just want to create two adult independent living places in one on one residential lot and so a, a, looking at accessory housing is a way to make it a win-win for the whole family the uh, adult children feel more comfortable because their children now have a safe place to, to live with reasonable rent and they know that it's someone who cares about grandma and grandpa and can help provide good, caring, consistent service. So accessory housing or echo housing is another option. There are, by the way, um, small, almost like mobile homes, mo motor homes, that are a hospital room that you can bring onto your property. They have to be temporary. They can't have a permanent foundation on them. And again, you'll need to check with your city for an ordinance, and you'll need to assure them that once your loved one um, no longer needs that residence, that you will remove it. So, so again, you're not creating a duplex on a single level um, living. But that's another option if, if that would work for your, um, for your loved one. So if you want to Google or do an internet search, I suppose I shouldn't brand it. If you want to do an internet search for accessory housing, ACU, accessory housing units, are the independent ones, or echo housing. You'll see lots of innovative ideas for how to convert a basement into an apartment and have that, have that shared entrance, and, and then how to talk to your city council. In Dakota County, no one has ever gone to any city council in all of Dakota County and ever been turned down. When, asked, when, they, when they explain that that's what they want to do for the sake of a returning veteran or for the sake of an older adult who needs that additional care. So it's just a step you need to know about that you need to go through your city, but it's very doable for you. All right, so then the other option I've kind of skittered on is bringing in professional help. Mom and Dad want to stay in their home, but they can't run that vacuum cleaner anymore. They can't, they need help getting dressed in the morning. They need help sorting out their medications and they live in Santa Barbara, California and I'm here in, in St. Paul and I can't run down there and, and set up their medications for them. Then that's time to bring in some professional services, whether it's a homemaking program or a home health aid or someone to do their yard work for them. At the presentation we're gonna be doing in two weeks, it's a presentation called Community Resources. How do you know when it's time to bring in help? And that's what we'll talk about during that hour in two weeks. And then, how do you know where to go for help? Those of you who live in Dakota County or whose loved ones live in Dakota County know to call darts, but how do you know where else to turn? And we'll sort through that in two weeks. But there is a plethora of services available through your church, available through the, uh, the local uh, nonprofits, available through the, the county in which your elders live, and we'll talk about that. But I just want you to be, to be thinking, if they're insistent that they want to stay in their home and you're concerned that it's no longer safe for them to do that independently without help, that there are services that can be brought into their home, it is not time to have that conversation that said, no, you need to go. All right. And then, what if you need a major remodel? What if we're going to bring the laundry up from the basement? We're going to take out the tub and we're going to put in a um, no-threshold walk-in shower. Those cost a lot of money. I grant you that. What if you need to convert a smaller bedroom to a large enough bedroom in order to make it possible for someone to be comfortable? 
they do cost money and I just like to throw out the option of a reverse mortgage most of our parents are concerned at the concept of a reverse mortgage because they lived through the depression and they're very concerned about losing that asset but you need to know that you can't get a reverse mortgage unless you thoroughly understand a reverse mortgage and a reverse mortgage is a way for people who own their home outright or who for whom at least eighty percent of the equity in their home has been paid for has been paid down to then get get monthly payments or get a loan from the bank to spend down some of that equity. The, a reverse mortgage does not ever have to be repaid because then when the home eventually sells, the bank will get their money back. All right? So it do, so I guess technically it does get, the bank does get their money back, but it's not as if mom and dad ever have to start worrying about now they have to make mortgage payments that money gets repaid to the bank at the when mom and dad are no longer in that house and that house has been sold or title of it has transferred to another family member so maybe the grandchildren are going to buy it and the bank will still need to get paid back there questions on reverse mortgages yes yeah so if they have the review group how are you going to do remodels I, I invite you to have exactly that conversation with your bank because when you do remodel on a 100 year old home, mm -hmm. you're increasing its resale value. So the more, I, I'm gathering you have not had that conversation with the bank. No, I, I invite you to have that. I, I am, would be willing, let me assure you that you can make a case that that money you're going to invest in a 100 year old home is going to improve the resale value of their home, that home, and therefore get more money back to the bank. Okay. So have that conversation with them. You just want the other kind of first mortgage. So what she's saying is that her parents currently, to offset some of their ongoing expenses, currently have their first mortgage set up so that the bank sends them money every month off the equity of their home. And that's the other way to set up a reverse mortgage. And what I'm saying is talk to the bank about doing both. They may have some restrictions. Yes, you can do the bathroom and the electrical, but no, we don't want, you know. But they have a vested interest in, in updating that home as well. Okay. All right, other questions on reverse mortgage? And again, remember that in order to get, to, to get a reverse mortgage, you need to attend reverse mortgage seminars and and demonstrate that you understand what it is so that nobody feels they're getting taken advantage of so that both the bank and the borrower um, know that they're on the same page I do know that there are through the CDA so through the community development agency of it, that every county has there is money available for home modifications and it's much like a reverse mortgage it's a zero interest loan that doesn't have to be paid back until the homeowner vacates the present pre pre property thank you <laughs> so so that might be another way to do it is is through the cda and the difference is the bank will want when they do it will have it, there will be interest assessed for the for the CDA it's a zero interest loan that doesn't have to get paid back until they leave the premises one other thing about reverse mortgages often older adults resistance to that is oh no there goes part of the legacy I was going to leave my children but if you look at the options that are coming up next if they don't make those modifications, they can't stay in their home safely. They're going to need to sell the home, and the money from the, that sale of the home is still going to help them with their next housing option. So we just need to make them comfortable with the fact that their investing in this home is investing in their dreams and their expectations. And it's also part of the inevitable aging process because if they don't make modifications in this home then they will need to sell this home and use that money to help fund their next option alright so for whom might this be the best option available 
as you look at your list of strengths of the elder that you care about that you wrote on the front page of the worksheet, if you wrote that they like to read, they like to crochet, they like to invite guests in, then this might be appropriate. If what they like is lots of activity, they want to be playing cards, they're isolated, they want more, they, they need more interaction, they want to be around friends, they like to be, you know, they've always been an extrovert, they want that, then maybe that's time for you to take a look at another option because chances are, as they get older, there aren't going to be as many people coming in to visit. And so that's just a little selling point for the next step, which is independent senior housing. There are lots of different options for independent senior housing. And I want to take a minute for those of you who, are, um, who have this book in front of you to talk about it. It starts at the options for independent senior housing starts at page 51. The first time I saw one of these books, it was very complicated to try and figure out how they work. But they start with the least amount of services that you need and work their way all the way through to nursing home care. So at fifth, page 51 starts the options for independent senior housing. And those options include senior cooperatives and condominiums, market rate apartments and subsidized apartments. And I'm going to go through the three of them now. So senior cooperatives and, con and condominiums generally each Resident has their own private secure entrance, whether it's in an, a building of condominiums, they still have their own locked and secure entrance. They have maintenance paid for by an association, so maintenance is covered whether it is fixing a ceiling fan or doing the yard work, that is covered, and then they own it. Generally, these senior-built cooperatives and condominiums are built with all of, all of those accessible features we were just talking about. So they're built with the levered handles. They're built with the lighted switch plates, with the uh, electrical outlets at, at wheelchair height rather than, um, you know, remember when they used to be down on the floorboards? All right, so uh, often with a walk-in shower as well. So that's just another option. Again, they have the ownership, but they're in a senior community. So now for those seniors who want to be with people of their generation, who want to maybe do some activities, play cards, they don't need services brought in yet, or maybe they need limited services brought in, this is an option for them to still have their independence, to have greater socialization opportunities, to invest that money that they just got from selling their home into this condominium. So again, they've protected that asset. All right, and yet have some more opportunities to now age in place in a residence that is appropriate, that is safe for them. Have any of you ever been to one of these townhomes or condominiums? Yes, and? Oh, they're nice. I mean, they're, you know, for people who are understanding. My, my mother-in-law lives in one, and because it was designed for someone to stay there until the day they die, I mean, that's how they sold this unit to her, it is amazing all of the things they thought of for her, including the washer and dryer are up on a platform so that if she's in the wheelchair, she can still get in and, in and out, of the, out of the wheelchair. The oven door opens from left to right so that, I mean, if you th who thinks about this? Mm -hmm. I hadn't, but if you open the oven door this way and you try and wheel your wheelchair up there, you can't get in there safely. Or even if you're a frail older adult standing on their own to try and bend over and reach in and bring out a casserole dish. Um, that's very precarious, but a, what a great idea. Just put the door over on the side. Anyway, so I, I invite you, if you're considering something like this for your loved one, to go do some visiting. I, I think you will be surprised.